Hello everyone! Things get interesting today. I did the single most impressive swipe I've ever done to create a beautiful autumn themed ivy piece with some new techniques and products that I haven't tried before. Let me show you how I did it. Don't forget the original piece is now available to buy on my website. It's going to be all about autumn today. The leaves are changing colors, looking beautiful. I know how many of you love the autumn season, so these are the colors for today. I am going to be using burnt sienna, pale green, scarlet red, lemon yellow, mars black, my favorite gold, and also orange by Cossart. And I must admit, I intermixed them a bit, some of them. For example, I created this green and this green, they look slightly different, by adding a bit of brown to the color and then a bit of yellow, mixed orange with yellow a bit and add a bit of orange to this yellow. So these are our colors. I am not going to start with the canvas first, I'm going to start with pouring paint on something else. This is an old silicone mat uh, used for baking. Well, I didn't use for baking. I am not that great at baking. And these crazy containers, if you haven't watched my tutorials yet, I recycle everything. These are lids from cosmetic products, yogurt jars, anything I can find. So I added one part of my paint to one part of pouring medium and then I added one part of Floetrol. Now the British Floetrol is slightly different, it's a bit thicker than the American one. So I usually spray some water in till it's that runny. See the consistency? Just a, such a tiny build up. It runs really nicely and smoothly. And it's very important that all your paints have the same consistency. So now the fun part, let me just spread the colors. You can spread them anywhere you wish. You see those containers, you can bend them and they actually easy to, to pour. If possible, I'm trying not to put the red next to green, but well, if they mix, I will just get another shade of brown. So that's not a problem with autumn painting. But if it was something else, I'll be quite careful. Here it's all right. It just occurred to me that it would be nice if I could move the sheet. So putting it on something smaller that I can lift and tilt. Some of the yellow. Got those greens now. And this darkish green. Brown. It's interesting how the orange spreads sort of more than other colors and the yellow. I've forgotten my gold. Okay, and now I'm going to shift the paints a bit. And now I'm going to add some black. So let me swipe now. I'm not going to use much black, a little bit. I know how everybody loves cells, so I'm going to put two drops of coconut hair serum into it. It's not coconut oil, I always say. It's not coconut oil, coconut hair serum, which is a dimethicon product. Oh well, three. And let me spread it here. I hope you can see it's not that much. I'm going to swipe with paper towel, but I'm just thinking, can I manage swiping with one huge chunk or do I prefer small sections? Oh, let me think. I don't think I've tried it so big. Okay, let's challenge ourselves. I'm going to spray it with water. I don't want it soaking wet, just a bit damp. And let me position and the paper towel. Okay, it's just touching the paint. Oh my goodness. Okay, and now I have to drag it ever so gently. It's not stunning. <laughs> this is so beautiful. Oh, who doesn't love a good swipe? Let me just show you a close up once they're growing. Oh, and 
they just something i love them i love them i'm sorry i'm so excited i couldn't have dreamt of a better swipe yeah that's awesome okay and the red showed up in <laughs> many places so that's good so i'm going to leave it to dry it wasn't the thinnest layer so a day or two and then we can make something out of it that's the plan i just wonder if you have a favorite section some of the cells are triple that's cutie We've got green yellow red and green outside they're so amazing a crocodile skin it dried beautifully look at this so silky and smooth no bumps no cracks awesome so i'll be peeling it off and i'm making leaves out of it i was thinking what kind of background would look good and i was really thinking trying to make some mock-ups and i think i'll go with black and red actually that was my conclusion but it could be many different backgrounds i will use the same red as i was using for making this wipe that's crimson nice deep color I was thinking of pouring first. It will be much quicker if we just spread it with a brush. It will dry much quicker. It's lovely deep red. Paint is a bit thick, which is good because it will be very opaque. And we can add some water to spread it further. Now a bit of black. I'll have to blend those two in so that turns into some kind of a deep maroon. The red seems to be much thicker. While the background is getting dry, I can start on the most fun part for me, which is peeling off the skin. As usual, I'm looking for the thickest section. Just look how satisfying this is. Also, I wanted to show you something. It's, you see the texture here? Those black parts are a bit raised up here, which is awesome. Yay. All right. Super, super, super easy. Not speeding it up. That's exactly how it goes. Wow. How pretty is here? But not as beautiful as this part. There are endless possibilities for these skins, you know. Okay, so my leaves. I was walking around and I saw these. And I thought these would be easy to trace and cut because they don't have any serrated edges and they are pretty enough. I do like those shapes. And they're gorgeous. This is just ivy. I quite like this section with black. I think it's gorgeous. I am using yellow Posca pen. Yes, I can see the outline. And if it's slightly different, it doesn't really matter. So I might trace all of them. And very interesting that they are from one stem and each leaf is different. How different this is to this one and even that one. I don't know how many I need. The acrylic markers work very well on acrylic background. I can also wipe sections off if I don't like it. I'll start cutting them out and see how many more I need. It's very, very pleasant cutting them out. It's a really smooth job. Much easier than cutting a textile piece. Okay, let's see what it will look like against the black. Oh, how pretty. Oh, pretty. That's the last one from the batch I've just drawn. 
I position them roughly on the canvas and I think might even be enough. And then I will look for what's the best arrangement. Think about composition. This is something we talked about in my with my students this week. Composition of an artwork. <laughs> it's funny, I seem to be really influenced by what I do with my students because we're also doing shading with black and red. It's not funny. I didn't even think about it. I've been arranging my leaves. They're still loose. Thinking of best positions. I want two, two stems. One coming this way and then one over here. So I'll try and stick one now. This is just PVA glue. I might dilute it with water a bit because it's very, very sticky and very thick. Now I'll tell you what my plan was. So I was going to use glue gun to do some outlines. I've been using glue gun with pouring for quite some time now for and I really like the technique but some of you are telling me that it's too difficult, your hands are shaky. Then I came up with this paste that I squeezed in a bag well as a replacement and that works re really well. I never talked about the simplest option because I always try to find something you know that's easily accessible on the budget, you don't have to go to an art shop to find it. But of course they are products I've got quite a few of these, so you basically squeeze them out and you don't have to use glue gun, you don't have to use any putty or paste. This is super easy. All you do is just press it and go, go around, so show you how to do that. So this should basically work the same way my little piping bag works. If you do it slowly, you get slightly thicker edge. Just like this. And it's gold straight away. I don't have to paint it. So there's another bonus if you like it. It does stretch a bit so you can make thinner lines. It is actually pretty stretchy. Well, wow, it's so easy to apply that. I'm not sure about the efficiency, but we'll see how much I use for the whole thing. I have plans for it for later. You might have guessed what I'm going to do, I wonder. Outlining on the dark area, like this black, looks really nice. Doing section by section. You can actually apply uh, on top of one layer. It kind of blends together if it's too thin. It looks so awesome on black. I want to fill my leaves with resin, but before I do it, some of those leaves have edges up to here, so I'm going to protect the edges. I don't want the resin to drip down my canvas. So I'm cutting some tape. One here, one here, and just a little bit on this side. Oh, I haven't noticed this tiniest, tiniest thing. Okay, I think that's it. So now I think I need a really small amount of resin. I don't need much. I've got those little scoops. Maybe I'll use that. Please always use gloves when working with resin and the respirator. My resin is actually not volatile, but I'm still using gloves. It's very difficult to measure coverage, you know, when you have just some elements. So I, I always eyeball everything. <laughs> well, it's better to make a bit too much than not enough one part of resin to one part of hardener. So I'm going to use two scoops of resin and two scoops of hardener. Now I'm going to mix it really well for three, four minutes, scraping all the edges. You have to have those two ingredients really well combined. I took the glove off only because it's precision work and I'm not going to touch any resin at all. So I just want to be careful. Um, start with this one. Uh, the edges are not very thick, so I'm not sure how much resin I can put in here. Uh, glue gun edges are much thicker. However, these hold as well, and that should give us some nice dome. But I suppose once I get to leaf number three or four, I'll be much quicker. Just testing my grounds now. I 
I'm hoping my borders will hold because I'm putting quite a lot. This is quite bulging. Now super exciting popping the bubbles. I'm going to cover my little pillows now with a box so it's safe and no dust can get into the resin. These are gorgeous. They are dry. I'm just trying to find my favourite. And time for peeling the tape off. Now I've been trying to plan the stems, I just penciled them very gently. So let me start with this one. If that's the branch, it has to be thicker. And maybe once it's dry I'll go over yet again. And then I'll attach those smaller sections from individual leaves, that's what I'm thinking. Now connect here. That's again what I'm considering the main branch direction. So it's going like this. Now it's going to come out. Oh no! <laughs> okay, I need to wipe it up. But it's good, the background is completely dry. The leaf is completely dry. That's easy. I do want them thicker here and getting thinner towards the edge. So that's all good. And I want to finish it off with a little, well, little, little swell perhaps. Now I'm trying to add one here. And then I'll go over. I think that's pretty nice, the little curly bit. I wonder if. If there's anybody called Ivy watching it, a big thick one here, just some little connections. At the moment we've got this and I think I'll leave it at this stage. Don't they have some reggae vibes? That's what we have in the end. there we are this was certainly a really satisfying piece i had lots of fun with the new paste uh, let me know which 3d line technique is your favorite in the comments and don't forget that this piece is for sale now on my website abcreativeofficial.com i have a new video coming every saturday so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and turn on notifications if you haven't already so you don't miss out and i'll see you all next week Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.